Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, it's been a while. I haven't posted any videos. Uh, so I'm back with another video on software defined radio and specifically we're dealing with GNU radio and how you can use GNU radio to actually prototype uh, any communication system. So I'm just uh, going through some basic stuff that everyone should know about GNU radio when you're playing around with GNU radio. Uh, in the meantime, I've also been posting videos on different applications of software-defined radios, but this particular tutorial is going to be on GNU Radio. And what we're going to look at in this tutorial, we're going to try to add different types of signals together, and we're going to look at it in terms of their sync, in, in terms of oscilloscope, FFT, waterfall graph, and constellation diagram. Uh, if you were to look at my flow graph, it's quite simple. Uh, we're trying to add up a couple of signals together. In, in this example, I'm adding up two signals. I think uh, I made a video already on it uh, uh, when when I, when I added like multiple sinusoids together to form a square wave. But in this, we're going to add two different type of signals. It's just not going to be sinusoidal or cosinusoidal wave. It could be a rectangular wave, sawtooth, triangular wave, and things like that. So the flow graph is quite simple. I have a source uh, that has a frequency of 1 kilohertz. And I also have another source that has a frequency of 800 hertz. All right, both of these sources are being controlled by these QT GUI chooser block. And what this block is doing, it allowing me, so waveform one is actually being controlled by this chooser. So based on this, I can choose a waveform on runtime. Like for example, waveform one could have uh, options like uh, sinusoidal, cosinusoidal, rectangular wave, and triangular wave. As you can clearly see, same thing. Uh, this is also being controlled by this uh, QT GUI chooser block, which is waveform 2. That is also being controlled. Both of them signals are being added together. And we're also looking at it in time sync as well. So basically, we're looking at both of these signals in a oscilloscope. And they are added together. Of course, I'm passing through a throttle block uh, because I don't want to over... Uh, uh, do congestion of my CPU so I'm using a throttle block so the default rule for thought throttle block I, as I mentioned earlier before as well uh, you don't want to overrun your CPU so you just control it uh, if you have your hardware devices connected to it that's perfectly fine if you don't you have to use throttle block and it's going into a QT GUI sync now this QT GUI sync will give you uh, a lot of options, like for example, this option is on where you have to plot frequency, waterfall graph, time plot, constellation plot, and then you have a message port. So we're looking at both of these signals, uh, at addition of these signals in terms of all of this. So everything is on. Uh, if you were to go into the property, you can turn it off and on, whatever you want. So let's just quickly run this flow graph and see what's going on and try to find out. So when I hit play, this is, okay, these are the two different waveforms that you're getting it from your QT GUI sync from here. Uh, now the next one, this is where your, this is the graph, this is the graph given by your QT GUI sync and these two graphs are given by time sync. So all the options are on. So I'm seeing my frequency display, my waterfall display, my time domain display, my constellation display. And this is just the raw signal. Uh, these two time sync graphs are just the raw signal, which is coming directly out of the source. And when you add them together, this is going into a QT GUI sync. And this is the output graph. So now, if you were to look at it closely, so this is a cosinusoidal wave. This is another cosinusoidal wave. One wave is 1 kilohertz. The other wave is 800, kilo, uh, 800 hertz. One wave is 1 kilohertz, the other one is 800 hertz. So this is just showing you both of these waves. Now, if you were to look at frequency display, by just simply adding two signals, I can see, and they are very close to each other. One is uh, 800, the other one is about approximately 1 kilohertz. You can see that this is getting close. I mean, this is sort of like um, becoming like a square wave. If I start adding more signals close to each other, you will start forming more of these, you will find these smaller dips, more and more of these smaller dips. And once you start adding infinite signal, you'll start getting your square wave signal. This is the basic idea behind this. 
So now let's have this cosinus ordinal wave as is. So this is sort of like modulation as uh, not modulation. Modulation you're basically multiplying together. We're just basically adding signals together. Now let's change, leave this to cosine. And let's go here and change this to rectangular. And we will see what will happen to the spectrum as well. So this is the frequency spectrum. This is that waterfall graph. So let's just look at the waterfall graph. So this is just a much thicker waterfall graph. And so as you can see this, and now let's look at the time domain graph. This is sort of look like modulation, amplitude modulation happening. And let's look at the constellation diagram. So this is how the constellation diagram looks like. This is a complex signal. You have in phase and quadrature. Now uh, let's look at this and let's change this frequency. Uh, now I have one source that is cosinus ordinal. The other source now is going to be a rectangular source. And as soon as I start doing that, I would see a lot of different harmonics because don't forget that square waves and sawtooths and triangular waves, these are actually com combination of a lot of sinusoidal waves. So they are all together. So this is your 800. This is your one kilo. The next peak is somewhere around 400 kilohertz. The next one is around seven, 700 kilohertz and then 10 kilohertz and so on. So it's uh, these now basically what you're trying to do, you're trying to add cosinusoidal wave with square wave and let's look at the waterfall graph as you will see that there are a lot of different lines because there's a signal because normally these square waves and sawtooth and triangular wave they occupy a infinite spectrum now let's look at the time domain graph this is how a time domain graph looks like of course we won't be able to make much sense of it and you have a constellation diagram that looks something like this now let's change this to triangular wave uh, not much of a difference. You will still see a lot of harmonics. This is the waterfall graph. This is your time domain graph and this is your constellation diagram. Now let's change this to sawtooth. Not much of a difference. You will still see there's a lot of a spectrum going on. A lot of other things. Why, why there's more as compared to square wave sawtooth? Because of the transition. Every time you have a transition like this, that has a rapid transition. This thing has a delayed transition, but when it's coming down, it has a lot, it's a rapid transition. Based on this rapid transition, you will see that the spectrum is widened up as compared to the other waveform. And in this, basically, you can just play around with this. Uh, you will see a waterfall graph that looks something like this. You will see a time domain graph that looks something like this and constellation diagram that looks something like this. When you have one signal that is cosine a wave, what happens if both of these signals are sawtooth? When you look at it, you will see that spectrum is further uh, populated as compared to the other waveform. Let's say I have one being sawtooth and one being rectangular. Let's see what happens to the spectrum. So based on this, uh, you can analyze what's going on in terms of my constellation diagram, my waterfall graph, my frequency graph, by just adding two signals together and having one signal being uh, a different signal or similar signal or two different type of signals. Normally when I say rectangular wave, I mean to say uh, your on and off signal uh, for digital communication. We normally don't use sawtooth or triangular wave. Those are just some dummy signals, but uh, this square wave is the one that we normally use for to achieve digital modulation. I think I've made videos on it as well. Uh, so that's the idea. Uh, just to explain that how does, when, when I start adding up two signals together, what happens to your uh, waterfall graph, frequency graph, time domain graph, and constellation display. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please do leave it in a comment section. Uh, and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. And thanks for watching.